Thanks to everyone for joining us today. I'm Taryn Jones. I'm part of the developer marketing team here at Kong. Um, we wanna welcome you to today's online meetup. We're gonna be talking about getting an environment prepared for plugin development in honor of our upcoming Kong Summit Hackathon. Uh, if you haven't heard of the Hackathon yet, I'm gonna give you a quick overview and then I'm gonna pass it off to Enrique to walk you through a short presentation and demo. Um, at the end, we'll open it up for Q&A and discussion. Um, then you'll be able to unmute, turn on your video, uh, but if you want to just drop your questions in the chat, you can do that as well, and we'll make sure and keep an eye on the chat. Um, so with that, let's get started. So what inspired today's meetup um, was the inaugural Kong Summit Hackathon. Um, we wanted to create an extra opportunity specifically for our developer community and around our biggest event of the year, which is Kong Summit. As you can see my background here, which by the way, if you have not registered for Kong Summit yet, it is a digital and totally free. So go ahead and, and uh, register for that. But I wanna give you just a very quick overview of Kong Summit Hackathon, if you haven't heard of it. Submissions open a week from today um, and they are open through the, through the first day of Kong Summit. Um, so head to kongHq.com slash summit dash hackathon and you can see all of you can go ahead and look at all of the categories start maybe getting some ideas and gathering your team and you can sign up for updates um, so make sure and go check that out I'll post that in the chat in just a second um, here is the preview of the categories um, so you see you know, of course we have our very first one which we'll be talking more about today the best uh, best Kong Gateway plugin. Um, if you're interested in Mesh, Insomnia, any of that, we have categories for that as well. And we even have a best presented demo category. You know, it's important to show us, um, you know, exactly what you've done. Um, so you can potentially win two categories. Um, so I'm just admitting some more people here, excuse me. Okay, so there's gonna be a $250 prize for every category winner. Then we're gonna have a $500 prize for the overall winner. And you're gonna get a special award at Kong, presented at Kong Summit, like on the main stage, on day two of Kong Summit, we're gonna have a whole award ceremony on the main stage. Um, but everyone that submits is go, um, an approved submission is going to earn a limited edition t-shirt that we're gonna send on to you. So. I hope everyone will contribute. And of course, now we're really gonna focus on that best Kong gateway plugin category. Um, so I will pass it over to Enrique to get started. So I'll stop sharing my screen if you wanna share yours. Okay, trying. Okay, can you guys see my screen? Let me show the presentation instead of my console to begin with. Looks good. All right. So we have already talked about the summit. Let me get to my presentation itself. So my name is Enrique Garcia. I'm part of the uh, of the team that deals or builds the open source version of the Kong Gateway. And uh, I've been doing this for several years already. But what I'm going to talk about today is not my field of expertise. This was developed by someone else on the team. So uh, please be patient with me, okay? So this presentation has three parts. The first part is uh, setup, quick setup. We'll set up something called Pongo. Then we'll write a basic plugin and test it with Pongo. And at the end, we will run a custom version of Kong using that custom plugin that we just wrote. So let's start with, with the installation or the prerequisites. Pongo is a Kong project that is specifically built in order to help people build and test plugins. So it's based on Docker, so that is one of the prerequisites that you need. You have to have Docker installed on your machine. It's not the only one. You 
you can see here that you need Coral as well. Sorry, spoilers. And also Real Path, but that one I think it's optional. Uh, the README explains the installation steps very easily. Uh, these are guidelines, I would say. You don't have to install it this way. You don't have to create uh, a .local slash bin folder if it's not convenient for you. The main thing that you have to do is you have to include the Pongo uh, binary in your path somewhere. Uh, I said binary, but it really what Pongo is, is a bunch of scripts, in bash scripts, if I remember correctly. So yes, this is a guideline about how you would go about installing it by creating a, a symbolic link on this particular path, on this particular .local.bin, but I actually have it on a different place. What you have to check, and I'm going to switch to my console um, for a little bit, is that you need to have the Pong Pongo uh, as an executable insult. Okay, if you have it, chances are that you are good. Okay, uh, what I was spoiling before is that these instructions are for Linux and Mac, but recently we added support for Windows as well. This is a very new development. If I remember correctly, this was done on the last month. So it's still a bit in beta, but you can follow the instructions on the repo as well. There is a section for Windows and you can install Pongo on Windows that way. So you can do development of plugins in Windows. I don't have a Windows machine, so I'm not going to follow those. Well, in fact, I already have Pongo installed, so I'm not going to follow those instructions. But that was the main thing. You need to have Pongo in order to do what we are going to do in a couple of steps. Next step is creating a basic plugin. First, a little bit, a little note about where you can find the docs. The main docs site contains a, a guide called plugin development. You can see it at the top of this uh, screenshot. And uh, yes, it explains how, what are the different folders or um, files that compose or can compose a plugin. But in order to start, I wouldn't start with this guide. Instead, I would go to this other project. It's in, I don't know if you guys can read it well, it's in github.com slash kong slash kong minus plugin. And this, what this project is, is a template. This is a way to basically have a bunch of files already pre-made with the default parameters. So you can start, uh, instead of going from zero to 60, you start at 60 with this, with this one. It has tests, it has a bunch of stuff. We're going to see some of that stuff in a moment. And you will notice that instead of the usual uh, clone dropdown here at the, at the top, you have a very unusual, I didn't know about this feature of GitHub. You can use this project as a template. So pressing there, you will, let, let me go over this one. You will get a dialogue such as this one. And, you can add a name to your plugin, a description, and then you will have your own uh, fork, or it's not exactly a fork, your own version of the plugin using the template that I just said. Um, there is one note that I wanted to add, which is that in order for, for things to work correctly, um, we have to be a bit careful about how we name things. So my recommendation is what you can see on the screen. The, the repo itself should be called Kong plugin and then the name of the plugin. And that, that's, that's basically it. And the same will happen with the Lua Rock. We'll talk about what the Lua Rock is in a moment. 
Okay, so uh, I think this is the time to start demoing this. So I'm going to open, I'm going to exit the presenter mode. I think that's, sorry, I think that's X, yes. I'm going to go to github.com slash com slash com plugin. Ah, uh, confirm. Thank you, GitHub. And now I'm going to press on use this template. So now it's asking me what to name my plugin or my, my repo in this case. So again, very important, Kong plugin, and then whatever you want to add. In this case, I'm going to name it add headers. And this is a simple plugin. to the request and the response. I'm going to put comment here. Okay, it's public and I don't need to include all branches. So I'm creating my repo now. Here it is. Here is me. Okay, we got it. And that seemed to work quite well. There are a couple things that uh, we should note, which is that what this template doesn't allow us to do is to rename uh, uh, the plugin. So I named it uh, add headers, but here you can see that it's still called my plugin, my plugin. It says my plugin in several places. So the first thing we have to do is fix that. I'm going to get this plugin. And then I'm going to look for uh, my plugin. For example, I use the Silver Searcher. There are, your software editor will probably have a way to look for files named in a certain way. This is what I use. Uh, yeah, so you can see that everything that contains this string, my plugin, is inside spec, and then there is the rock spec as well. I'm going to modify those quickly. It's going to be called add. There's and this one as well. Oh, I picked the wrong one. Sorry about that. I know this one. So the plugin name is again. I'm going to take the opportunity since I'm here, I'm going to change some of these values as well. My account name on GitHub is Kikito, and this repo name is going to be Kong plugin add. Headers. Okay. And finally, I'm going to buy my plugin. If I remember correctly, there, are, there were a couple files and folders called my plugin as well. Yeah, all of this. So all of this needs to be changed. Ah. And
finally, I think the only thing missing is yeah, the rock spec. So I'm going to move it as well. This is called headers. So if I did everything correctly, now there should be no my plugin anymore. So these are the changes. Basically, five files needed to be renamed, modified, or both. So I have committed that change. That is basically the setup for, for creating a, a, new, a new plugin. The next thing, um, the reason why I wanted you to install Pongo before we started was because we're going to use it now to run all the specs, which are the tests. I'm going to give them a quick look before. Spec up headers and uh, first unit spec. These are quite fast tests that make very basic, uh, well, you probably know already what a unit test is. Uh, very basic stuff about, yeah, uh, the configuration. Uh, some of these are also examples. You can most of the time erase all of this, but you can use it as a, a guide to write your own tests. And the same goes with the um, integration tests. These are a bit, these take a bit longer to run because they, uh, instantiate a, an instance of Kong in order to, to run the tests. And they also run them in using all the available databases. So Postgres, Cassandra, and DBLess as well. So let's see how that goes. Pongo run. OK, so it's using Docker to create everything that it's needed. And now. Yeah, it's starting the different containers, one, one for Cassandra, one for Postgres in a moment, I suppose. Yeah, I should mention that this is a common thing on Max. For some reason, using Zoom and Docker at the same time makes everything go more slowly. So apologies for that. Enrique, while we have just a second, while this runs, uh, Eduardo asked to create a plugin with Go, what would the directory structure look like and what files should it include? Is that a good time to answer that or do you want to hold that until the end? Uh, I don't have a right answer to that, I'm afraid. Uh, it's possible to create plugins in Go, but on this presentation, we are going to concentrate ourselves on the Lua side of things. Uh, it's, uh, I, I can get back to you on that later if you want. I haven't prepared for presenting that part, I'm, I'm sorry. And if anyone here knows the answer to that, go ahead and enter it in the chat. Um, and then Anoop asks as well, will there be any impact to Kong infrastructure if the number of custom plugins increases? Okay, so the, amount of types of plugins doesn't impact the performance at all. But up to a certain point, the number of plugin instances, which are different from plugins types, which is what we're creating now. Uh, yeah, it's running the tests already. Uh, the unit tests have all passed and the integration tests are passing. So yeah. Everything passed, everything is green. Most of the tests, as I said before, are uh, trivial, not very uh, uh, useful, except as guides for you guys to add your own tests. But you can see some interesting stuff. For example, 
Here you can see that Postgres is being tested and then Cassandra, and then the DBLS mode, which is called off. And uh, yeah, going back to that previous question. Um, yes, I have seen instances of enterprise uh, customers mostly, which had half a million plugin instances installed. And that did cause some problems, especially when they wanted to update a plugin. Then what an entity called Plugins Iterator, which is the global thing that we use in order to know what plugins need to be run on what requests, that took a while to re rebuild. But that, that's, that's what I am seeing, problems when you reach half a million instances. And again, plugin types don't have this problem. It's only plugin instances that are problematic. Okay, so we have run the tests. I'm going to go back to the presentation now and continue presenting. That was the, the uh, basic plugin in action. Now we can do more things in addition to running plugins, sorry, the plugin tests. There is also, okay, I want to run a pure Kong with this plugin. How do I do that? Do I have to install a Kong locally on my machine? No, you can use a Docker instance in order to do that. And uh, this is where I have to give you a warning. I have done this in the past and it worked, but for some reason today, uh, it didn't on my machine. I'm going to try again, give my best effort, but if it doesn't work, we'll just have to do with these slides, okay? So first, uh, a little word about Lua rocks. As I have said before, we are going to install a Lua plugin and uh, Lua has a repo uh, of open source uh, in, in other places, these are called, in Ruby, these are called gems. In Node, they have another name, uh, Node, I think it's called, uh, packages maybe. So this Lua Rocks is basically the package manager for Lua. And uh, Kong itself is a Lua Rock in Lua Rocks. Um, your plugin needs to be in Lua Rock in order to for you to be able to use it inside the custom Docker image. So you have to upload your plugin here. That's the short version. And how you how do you do that? Well, you go to lorax.org and create an account. It's very easy. And then you go to your plugin and do these things. I'm going to do those in a moment. Uh, fair warning about naming of things. Here I said my plugin, it should be called kong.plugin, so, sorry, kong slash plugin slash my plugin. You will see in a moment. <laughs> anyway, um, anything else I want to, yeah. I'm going to do the Lua Rocks thing now before going into Docker, Kong and other stuff like that. So I have, my add headers plugin here. And I have made some changes already. I'm going to open a file called rockspec. I have already edited it once. Ah, oh, I, I did a mistake while editing it. No problem. It says headers instead of headers. It's fortunate that I have seen this now. Headers. Okay. I'm going to commit this. Okay. 
and let me push. And now I'm uh, I'm going to spend a little bit of time on the rock spec, not not a lot. Rock specs are what the the, the definition file for Lua rocks, which are the Lua packages. So you have probably seen something similar to this on your language of choice. In Go, you have a Toml file that uh, defines the dependencies, etc. This is similar to that. Uh, things that are worth noticing, for example, here is where you def you define all the files that you need on your plugin. Uh, and the other interesting thing is that this particular um, rock spec requires you to use a branch in order to for it to work. So that's what we are going to do now. We are going to create a branch. Zero, one, zero. Yeah, here it is. We are going to push it. To GitHub. So when Lua Rocks tries to find it, it will find it on GitHub. Okay, now I'm going to go, let me exit this again. I'm going to go to the Lua Rocks website. Let me remove the zoom controls from here. And I'm going to upload uh, here. I'm going to upload the rock spec that I have just created. This is not the right rock spec. Tom plugging at headers. This is the right one. So I'm going to submit. And now it's up, up there. Since I do have Lua rocks installed locally, I can test that the rock works correctly. You don't have to do this step, but since I can do it, It works correctly. So I don't expect any trouble from Docker when it tries to install this, this package from Lua Rocks. Okay, going back to the presentation. The next thing is talking about Docker Kong. This is the project where we say how you should run Kong inside Docker. It has two important folders for this presentation, at least. One of them is called Compose, which is that, that folder hosts the Docker Compose file. And the other one is customized, sorry, customize. And that's the one that will help you build a custom image using the plugin that we just created. Okay, so let's start by cloning. In, the, in my case, I already have uh, Docker Kong on my machine. Then we have to run Sorry, we have to go to customize in order to build a custom image. And I'm going to do these steps now. I think it's easier than explaining the steps and then doing them. So here and then Kong. And inside here, customize. And I want to create a new image like this, but this plugin name is not correct. And this is one of the uh, traps that you have to be aware of. Uh, up until now, everything has, has been called Kong plugin add headers. Here, here's the exception. You have to put only add headers here instead of Kong plugin at headers. And I believe that was the reason why I was having trouble this morning, but I'm not 100% sure. Let's, let me try. I'm going to use, uh, let me explain the parameters a little bit. Uh, I'm going to use the latest version of Kong, Kong 2.5. I'm going to add a single custom plugin called add headers, which will be pulled from Dual Rocks. I should mention that in this folder in customized, the, there is a readme 
that explains that there is a way to do things without uploading stuff to Lua Rocks. So you don't have to do it in public. But for the purposes of this demo, we are going to use Lua Rocks. Um, we don't want to use the cache, so everything gets rebuilt from start. So we don't have any phantom cache problems from the previous attempts I have done today. And finally, we want to name our Kong image somehow. So this is the, the name that image will, will have. Uh, and very important, there is a dot at the end. Don't forget this, it's very easy to miss. So it's built in and on this log. It, it will happen fast, but on this log, at some point it will download the, uh, oh, it seems it failed at headers, failed. You can see. Yeah, this is what I was afraid of. The naming of plugins is a bit fuzzy. And if you don't set things exactly correctly, it might not work. Let me try again, but this time I'll put Kong add headers and cross my fingers. Again, let's see if this works, but now we are into the uncertainty. So let me try. Okay, that did work. So if I do Docker images, I should get, yeah, Kong with add headers. Okay, seems to be working so far. So the last step, well, the last step in, in order to have a Kong with this plugin up and running is actually started. So I'm going to go to the uh, compose folder inside this repo, and then I'm going to use Docker Compose. I have to pass it a variable that says, okay, you have to use this image instead of the default Kong image. So Kong, I think it was, yeah, Kong Docker tag come with add And then compose up. Ah, that's the command. And it's giving me trouble. Uh, this is what the problem I have been fighting with the whole day. I don't know exactly what is going on here. I, I apologize in advance. I should have tried this yesterday instead of today, but I didn't get time to fix it. What should be happening here is that Kong should start. And then you will you would also see Postgres and Cassandra start along with Kong. And uh, what is happening is that the initial plugins are not being uh, either correctly detected or initialized or something along those lines. I believe the problem is related with the naming I have used, but I still don't know exactly what the correct one is or should be. I see that there is a hand raised. Yeah, go ahead and unmute. Yeah, so sure. I think it's because uh, you did not enable the bundle plugins in uh, this uh, second build argument plugins equals to my plugin. And if you are facing an error which says the plugin is in use but not enabled, that usually points to this issue that uh, this plugin setting is not set. Uh, the plugin is not enabled in mentioned in this variable. This variable is uh, the plugin setting in, which is found in Kong.conf, right? So see the error is so somewhere. Is in use but not enabled. Or yes, is is that, that that's the error. Yes, but I don't understand what the uh, fix is. It seems that we need to add a second variable that I have missed. If I understood you uh, correctly, 
I'm not sure if uh, the uppercase response plugin, I don't know. I don't think this is a bundle. Yeah, plugin. yeah, the, exactly. If, it, if it's so, not, then you yes. should empty the database because the database is saying that you this uh, plugin is enabled somewhere, but it's not enabled. Yes. It basically, so, it's, yeah. Uh, what I was saying before is that I have done tests bef before with other plugins. One of, of them was uh, uppercase response. That's what's given us an error here. But this was days ago. And now I tried again and it didn't work. And I think it might be related with what you're saying with the database. However, I have reset and restarted even my machine and erased all the caches I could imagine. And that's still happening. So I think I'm, we're going to stop here. I'm going to tell you what should happen after this uh, is done correctly. Hopefully you won't have a problem with this particular uh, um, plugin because you won't have it in on your machine, but I do have it and it's giving me trouble. I don't know exactly why. So uh, yeah, in your argument, just add bundle comma and your plugin name, it will work, I guess. Uh, you mean here on on Docker Compose app, or do you mean on yeah, the yeah, yeah. where you are passing the argument for your plugin? There, uh, before the your plugin name, just add bundle comma and the name of your plugin. Uh, I think I think that is a different thing. Um, you need to enable uppercase response. Uh, that's that's not included in the bundle plugin. You yes. need to enable that also. Uh, uh, th this is what I said. Uh, let's not try to debug the problem here. Um, it's something particular to my machine. There is some kind of global state somewhere that it's saying that this plugin should be included, but that's not the standard Kong provided plugin. It's a custom one that I built while doing tests for this presentation but somehow is giving me trouble now. So let's, let's not try to debug it now. Probably there is something missing either here or here on one of these two slides. I don't exactly know what, and I couldn't unfortunately uh, debug what the problem was, but hopefully you guys won't have this problem because you won't be doing several plugins at the same time. You would be doing just the one. And with one, it worked for me, at least. So moving on, uh, what should happen after Kong is up and running is that you should be able to create services and routes and assign that new plugin that you just created to routes and services. And uh, yes, I cannot show it to you working, but yes, when I say create um, services and routes, what I mean is literally going to the admin API and I use HTTP, other people use curl and do something like this services, my service and then create a, something that points to mockbing, for example, basic stuff. So you create a service, then you create, let me write that one down as well. Route with a, with a single path. And then once you do that, you can add a plugin to the service. And yes, uppercase response is the plugin I used as an example the other day, and it's giving me trouble now, but in your case, you should use add headers. And if all this works correctly, then from that moment on, all requests and responses from any request on my service should get an extra um, an extra header on the request and on the response. And that's 
what this plugin does by default, adding a request header and a response header. I'm sorry, I cannot show you that, but these are the troubles of making demos. Sometimes they don't work as, as you want. Okay, I think that does it. Here are all the links to resources I have used on this presentation, and uh, I'll take any questions now. So we do have a couple questions from your first demo. I just wanted to clear up real quickly first. Um, and that was, um, can we create custom policies with the plugin to have authorization or, or authentication in place for APIs? Does the rebuild call, oh, I'm sorry, that was a separate question, that's it. I don't know exactly was what this person means by policies, but the short version is that this is code. You can add whatever you want in code. If the question is, can we create entities that live on the database, which is a bit more concrete, then yes, there is a, well, it, it's here on, the, on this second link, plugin development. The plugin development guide has a section about creating uh, custom entities. And one of the entities that you could create would be a policy. So then those policies would live on the database. They will probably need some kind of caching in order to be efficient. But that's how would, I would go around that. Let me see if I can find the good one. Yes, you, you would need at the very least DAOs.lua in order to define a custom a policy entity with the files, sorry, with the fields that you want, like the name. And uh, if you're going to use the a, a, a database, you would have to create migrations in order to create the records on the database so they can be stored. If you are going DBLS, you don't need to do the migrations part. Okay. Excellent. That was Thank perfect. you. Then he had a follow up question, and we may be, this is also the first demo, so we might be a little out of context here, but um, mm -hmm. he says, Does the rebuild cause any downtime? So when it says, when they say rebuild, I assume they mean the command Kong space rebuild. That is, sorry, rebuild is not a Kong command. Reload is a com command that happens very fast. Rebuilding takes some time. Uh, in general, uh, especially if you are sharing via Zoom, like I am doing now, Docker and Docker related stuff tends to be slow because it uses the network in order to download stuff. So the, mo the more stuff you have to download with Docker, the slower it will go. Even if you have cached a lot of things, uh, if you happen to touch a, a step that is up in the cache, you will have to download a bunch of stuff. So it depends a little bit on how your Docker cache performs. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and then if anyone else has any questions, uh, yeah, feel free and raise your hand. You can speak up or enter them in the chat. And yep, looks like we have one here. Is it possible to create a common custom plugin for request response transformation and add Lua code when the plugin is added to a service or route? And that's uh, right in the chat if you wanna read that through one more yeah, time. Yeah, let, let me read it because it, it sounds like a long one. <laughs> okay. Open oh, a second one just came in. So scroll All up right. there to the next question. Yes. Okay. So the first, well, the second to last question is can I add Lua code as config on a plugin? That's that's what this person is asking. And the answer is yes. But we decided to add some restrictions on how that code is executed. And we encourage 
our users to do that as well. So here is an example of what this person wants to do. On GitHub, there is a plugin called serve plugin serverless uh, actions. I believe it's no serviceless. Let me look for it. Sorry. <laughs> serverless functions. Yes. This plugin allows creating what this person said, a custom code in the config of the of the of the plugin. However, uh, we sandbox that code. The reason why we do that is because in general, the person maintaining your server and the person adding plugin instances to your Kong instance might be different and the trust might be different as well. So for that particular case, we sandbox it. You, you can look at, at the code of this plugin and see how we did that. If you are doing a plugin for some uh, custom stuff that you are not going to share with anyone and you trust everyone involved, then you can probably get away with not sandboxing the code. It's completely possible. Okay, the next question is in DBLS mode, when you reapply the config via the admin API slash config endpoint, will proxies handling live traffic in flight break or does run runtime kong leverage the all rather proxies just fine while it rebuilds it all okay that's a very good question lots of things going on there that's not really the plugin development at all but i think that i can answer more or less we did have problems with this what this person is asking happening uh when when using db less there was some shared state which provoked errors when we either reloaded a new version of the config or we restarted the uh, the servers. We restarted Kong with Kong, Kong reload or Kong restart. Uh, what was happening was that there were old instances of Kong still running and new instances as well and they both were acting on the same memory. That is not happening anymore. What we do have now is a pagination system. So every time you reload, the pages are switched and the old instance of Kong use the old pages and the new ones use the new pages. And you cannot switch more than once at the same time. It, it, tells you to wait, it gives you, gives you an error. And that's how we handle that particular problem. So it shouldn't happen anymore. It has been fixed as far as we know. And if it's still given trouble, please open an issue because it's a, it's a bug. Okay, appreciate that. Yeah, I remember working, uh, yeah, this is Jeremy I, I asked, that asked the question. I remember working with uh, Bungle a long time ago, uh, Oppo, about when Kong was in DB mode, uh, you know, routes and resources when it was building in the background would break during runtime if you sent like a load test to a proxy and then you made a config change right but then he added something that added like an old router new router table and yeah when the when the change was going on in flight the old router would take precedence while the new router built out before kong would start leveraging the new router so i'm guessing something similar works in db list mode yes Okay. okay. Hi, Jeremy. I think we have never spoke, but I know about you because Jeremy <laughs> is very active on our issues in Kong. So yes. Hi. All right. And yes, I was nice involved with, with Kong. Uh, yeah, the same. I was involved with uh, Apple, the person who did this change, and I was the one who reviewed it. So it's kind of fortunate that I got this question. Yeah, appreciate okay. it. No good news. So uh, yes, uh, uh, a little bit of spoiler, uh, we are considering other alternatives to doing what we are doing now because the two frame buffer approach has a problem which is that it consumes a lot of memory, uh, at least while 
the new instances are being deployed and the old ones are still there. Once everything has been deployed, you can erase. But yes, we are considering other, other options on, on that front for DBLS. Okay, so in quick, which is not my expertise, replacing DBLS Kong image with custom image uh, works correctly, but in database, it throws errors in migrations. You have to tweak something for it to work. I really don't know this one. I haven't tried. As I said, uh, I'm not the person who developed these tools via Docker Compose and Pongo and everything I have shown on this meeting is not my creation. And I actually don't use them very often because since I have to do Kong development, changing Kong itself, the way I test plugins is a bit different. So I'm afraid I'm not super familiar with these very specific details, like the one this person is asking. Sorry about that. Okay. I know we have Guan Lan on the line. Not sure if he's able to answer that either, though. But um, Siddharth, I see you have your hand raised. Um, if you want to go ahead and unmute. Sure. Hey, thank you. Uh, hey, uh, I, have a, I have a kind of like a follow up with the previous question. Uh, the uh, this is regarding the, the performance per se. So I remember you mentioned uh, increasing the number of plugins or uh, might not technically uh, make the performance bad, but I am trying to understand more about the instance versus the number. Uh, sure. The yeah. Okay. So this is part of our fault. We decided some time ago that we were not going to make a difference specifically in, in the docs about what is a Kong definition, a plugin definition and, and a Kong plugin instance. But those are very different. The definition is the source code of the plugin. So all the files and the schema of the plugin that defines how the config looks, all of that is the definition. Then you can have many instances of the plugin running simultaneously on one Kong instance. For example, you can add an instance of a plugin to an individual customer, sorry, consumer on, on Kong. So if you have half a million consumers, you could have half a million plugins, one for each consumer. So what I was saying before is that the number of plugin definitions is not a problem. I have never seen that being a problem on any uh, consumer or otherwise. However, I have seen problems when there were too many Kong plugin instances. So yeah, half a million plugin instances installed on half a million customers. That's the example that comes to mind. In that case, yes, you, you will have problems when you want to update a, a simple plugin, for example, then the global thing that we have will have to be rebuilt. And for now, it's not uh, incremental. We cannot build just a tiny part of it. We have to rebuild the whole thing. And that means iterating over five, half a million entities. So that takes time. Got it. Like it's more about the design time versus the runtime, is it? Or uh, the, the build time versus the runtime? Uh, in a way, yes, but uh, uh, but it's very indirect. That, that that relationship you have said it's very indirect. Okay. Uh, think about it this way: one of those is source code on a repo; the other one is records on the database, on the plugins table, to be exact. So, if the plugins table has half a million records, you will have a problem probably of performance. Great. I mean, do you have like a, sorry, again, just one last question. So do you have like a, uh, like a number which after which it might be haywire? Like, I mean, there might be some performance leaks. Like, I mean, per se like a thousand plugins or is that, do you have anything like that? Like the baseline? The, the thing, yeah, we get asked about uh, um, numbers a lot. 
And I'm afraid I don't have a straight answer to give you. I have a, an answer that will make you work more, which is not what people want, <laughs> which is do your own tests on your machines. That's my recommendation. If you are planning to suddenly increase the number of plugin instances a lot, then what I would do is create a staging environment and trying that and seeing how that performs. The problem is that Kong is an on-premise uh, solution. So there is a not a single number that we can give. It depends on the amount of, performance depends on the amount of CPUs you have, on um, whether it's virtualized or not, on how much memory you have even. So right. yeah, Got it. yeah. Do, do your own tests. I'm sorry, I cannot give you any more <laughs> specific yeah, answers. Yeah. Well, thank you. No worries. Anything else? I think we... Just, oh. uh, to Guan Lan, I think your audio is a little... Tool. Oh, Guan Lan, I'm, I'm afraid your audio is cutting in and out a lot. We can't hear you. I'm going to check one more time. Oh yeah, I'm afraid it's really bad on our end. If it's anything you can type in the chat, I can read it out. And then I know we are at the top of the hour. Um, Enrica, you let us know if, if you need to go. Jeremy um, did have one more question from a GitHub discussion thread. If we, if we had extra time, he said, but I'll leave that up to you. Uh, I can give it a look. Let me see. Do you, less yeah. I, I, you don't have to read this all out, but I can get you to like <laughs> the meat of it. So DB export, right? Gets the OAuth credentials in this format that you're looking at in this top block here, where yeah. the consumer's UUID is just an mm -hmm. element right there, consumer UUID. Whereas if you scroll down a little bit in here, you'll see where I kind of print a sample of what the credential by ID from the DB looks like. If we keep scrolling down a little bit further, a little bit further down. Um, Right here, so in the DB mode, this credential from client ID table, this block down below where it has a kind of the Lua table printing out, you can see in here, when it reads it from the DB, it makes the ID, then it has a consumer element, but rather than just put the ID in, it makes consumer, then a lower element ID, and then the ID. Does mm -hmm. that cause any issues for like DB versus DB list mode? Um, I'm just curious on like the parsing of that when you, you run the same code execution? Um, does, does the ID being indented with the ID value matter versus the DB export? I'm sorry, I have no idea, really. Yeah. The OAuth plugin is, again, not one of the plugins I usually uh, fix or support. Mm -hmm. And I'm not familiar with the specific uh, table structure that it requires, yeah. so. All good. Sorry. Jeremy, oh, I can, we'll yeah, we'll ask internally and we'll see if we can get you an answer on that. Sure, yeah, you appreciate the it. Right person. Yeah, I was just playing with writing some some custom code with the OAuth logic to kind of make it work in a DB list mode as like a, a proxy tool. So uh, yeah, thank you. Yes. And so looks what? like Guan Lan got a comment through here. Yeah, that after okay. 2.5, we have a performance testing framework built in. Yes, yes. Uh, it's a, a, a new development as well. But yes, now every time we add a new feature or fix a bug, we can run a set of performance tests in order to make sure that we are not inadvertently making Kong slower. So, but yes, as with any performance tests, they have to be taken with a grain of salt. If I remember correctly, um, they test basically the happy path, like inserting a, a lot of services, things like that. Again, your particular scenario or usage might be different from that uh, that we are testing. So uh, if you can give it a, a look if you want as orientation in order to write your own tests, but I wouldn't take them as this is the way to test Kong everywhere, all the time. 
Sounds good. Well, we're just a few minutes past the hour, so I think we can go ahead and wrap up. Uh, thank you all so much for joining. And remember, these calls happen second Tuesday of every month. So please join us next month. Say, thank you so much, Enrique, um, for filling in this week and Guan Lan for fielding some questions on the chat. Um, have You're a welcome. great day, everyone. And we'll see you soon. See you. And make sure and go check out the hackathon page. We hope to see all your submissions next week. Excellent. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.